This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. From MPB Think Radio, this is Mississippi Education Connection. I'm your host, Michelle McAdoo, along with my co-host, Tara Wren, Director of Education here at MPB. Well, at school's plans for full or partial distance learning, working parents are faced with the challenge of how to ensure that their children are in a safe learning setting while they go to work. Today, we'll take a look at a few alternative learning settings for children with our guest, Carrie Womack, with Homeschoolers of Central Mississippi, Jennifer Weiss from the Salvation Army Croc Center Homeschool Program, and Monica Jones, Director of the Judah School for Performing Arts. Now, if you have questions or comments, or if you know of a virtual learning assistance program in your community and would like to share it, that information with the state of Mississippi, please give us a call at one eight seven seven. Six seven two seven four six four. Well, good morning, Tara. Good morning, Michelle. How are you today? I am doing fine. I'm doing well. It's Friday. Yes. And I'm excited to talk about our topic today, alternative learning settings for students, because parents really need this information. And I'm one of them, because um, it's one of the things that I'm considering this year. So, wow. Yes. So I'm this excited. Is, so parents, if you're listening, if you're doing something and you not wanna, don't want to concentrate, I think this is a show that you need to sit down and listen to this information, because it's going to help you out with your children this summer. For working parents and um, parents that want to homeschool their children, this is a great show. Let's welcome our first guest to the show now. She's the co-creator and administrator of Homeschoolers of Central Mississippi, Carrie, Carrie Womack. Good morning. Good morning, Michelle. Thank you for having me. Good morning, and thank you for being a part of our show today. Oh, I'm excited to be here. I am as well. Well, let's start off by telling our listeners a little bit about you and the homeschooling organization and um, group you manage on Facebook. Okay, um, I'm Carrie Womack, and uh, I manage the Facebook group you mentioned, Homeschoolers of Central Mississippi. I also co-manage Peak Jackson with uh, Natalie West. She created that one about 11 years ago. Um, We have several other fantastic groups uh, around Mississippi and several other being created as so many new parents come and and, uh, look into homeschooling across the state. I was a special education teacher in public schools until we decided as a family to start homeschooling about seven years ago, and it's worked really well for us. Oh, seven years. So tell us what your group provides for uh, to families. Um, all of the groups, uh, there's a statewide group that's fantastic. Mississippi homeschoolers are awesome, which I highly recommend. Um They all help us connect with each other, uh, find resources, discuss opportunities, and um, create events for our kids to gather and and learn. One of us might hear about some art lessons, and we post about it, and, you know, other people get involved, or we uh, create, usually in a a non-COVID time, we create weekly park dates and things like that, so we have tons of opportunities for um, social gathering, for parties, for um, educational opportunities and and uh, extracurriculars. There's a homeschool archery team. I mean, I could go on and on. There's just a million things to do. Um, but we support each other. It, it can get kind of lonely as homeschool parents if we don't reach out and, and connect with other families. So um, we, we make lifelong friends for our kids and for ourselves. So Carrie, that's how I met you on Facebook and you and I have been talking over the past week or so because I'm trying or thinking about going this route with homeschooling. And I I found that the Facebook page homeschoolers of central Mississippi and peak Jackson offer some great resources for parents as well. You guys, as you're saying, get together um, activities, but the resources and I've asked, all kinds of questions. What do you do to get started and how you do this and how do you do this? And I have found it to be very much a resource for me. And so that's kind of what this show is all about is just providing a resource and letting parents know where they can go to find out about homeschooling. 
So with that said, is there a large group of homeschooling communities in central Mississippi? Yes, and it's grown exponentially in the last five years. Um, We have several local groups. We have more people like the Art Museum started offering um, art lessons a few years ago. Um, We have a co-op now in Ridgeland. It's called The Village, and it's fantastic. Um, And I'm all about outsourcing when I can, (laughs) Um, especially high school courses and things like chemistry that I really don't want to have to um, teach my high schoolers. So uh, we have all these opportunities, wonderful things, team sports, um, just all sorts of things that have been developed or have grown because we have so much more participation these last several years. Wow. So one of the main questions that I have, and I'm sorry, I'm a little off the mm-hmm. uh, my our question here, but one of the main questions that I have, when I, how do you get started? I mean, what what does it look like? What do you do? Because I hear you saying there's a group that teaches may teach math or art. So I'm not mm-hmm. really in this by myself. I'm not really doing this by myself. So how do you, how do you really get started as a homeschooling family? The first thing you want to do if your child is in public school is withdraw the student okay so legally the only thing we have to do in mississippi is complete this enrollment form which is now wonderfully available online at the mississippi department of education's website um turn that into our local student attendance officer and there's a list there on the website so if you're in hines county like i am there's a list of student attendance officers you choose one send them the card um and that's for children who are aged six to 17 as of, excuse me, six to 16 as of September 1st. We turn in that card by September 15th and that's it. That's all we have to do. Um, As far as getting started with curriculum and programs and things like that, the best thing to do is what you've done is join these Facebook groups, talk to other homeschooling families, um, talk with your kids, take your time, Try to figure out what's going to work for you and your family, how you envision this going, and then um, expect to be adapting that as you go because your kids will have their own ideas. And uh, <laughs> just sort of take your time and um, I don't know. I, just ease adaptable. into it. You, I find that it's a lot of reading. It's a lot of learning, like you say, adjusting to it. How, mm-hmm. So what is a transition look like? I know What did it look like for you and what could other parents or families expect when they're transitioning from public school or a private school setting to a homeschooling setting? Most of us probably expect to do public school at home. That's what I thought was going to happen. We were going to school from nine to two every day. We were going to have reading and math and history and science and it was going to be very finite and very organized. And the very first day my kids let me know that was not going to work. Mm-hmm. They finished. They, I had a whole day planned, and they finished everything within an hour because oh, wow. there are only two of them. You know, it's a very small class size, if you want to call it that. Mm-hmm. And we um, worked through that quickly. Also, learning happens all the time. A lot of the time, we're in the car, we're talking, we're listening to audiobooks, we're traveling to events or to um, meetups or competitions or classes and we talk and we we discuss things um learning is happening all the time it's not passive so i had a lot of unlearning to do myself as a former teacher in public schools and um my kids it's been a journey but we've learned together well carrie you talked about curriculum and how it seems like it's so many choices to ch- uh, out there to choose from, how the groups help uh, parents who are thinking about homeschooling um, pick their child's curriculum. But how do you know if your children, um, they're, gonna, they're on track with the other kids their age? Well, some of us are more um, relaxed about that than others, and I've gotten more relaxed over the years, which is probably pretty um, average. But... Um, most of us don't give standardized tests or anything like that every year. We just know that all of the kids are going to be on the same page before they go to college. So they don't all learn how to write five-paragraph essays at the exact same time. 
but they all get it before they need it and before it's time for them to go to college. They have to take the ACT or the SAT, so they have to have all of those skills, just like high school students and public schools or private schools. So we all have goals, but the kids get there at different times, and that's okay. We have the flexibility to do that. That's good. So, okay. So you talked about the socialization um, issue earlier, and I, you mentioned that a little bit. Because of COVID-19, you guys haven't been able to do the uh, groups and the field trips and things like that. But there right. is a um, – before COVID-19, there was a group that you guys got together, and you do outside um, – um, field trips and things like that. It's not just in the house with your kids. Because a lot of people have uh, maybe some negative thoughts about homeschooling and saying kids aren't getting the socialization um, skills that they normally get in public or private schools. Absolutely. And um, I think there's this idea that we all just sit at home and hide from the world, but it's not like that at all. We are always busy. We are always out exploring and meeting new people and, that, that's probably one of the things that really surprised me was my kids in, in the last seven years, anywhere we went, any event we went to, whether we knew people or not, they made new friends. They got along with everyone. They can talk to anyone of any age. And anyone who asked me in the grocery store or something, you know, how, how do my kids get socialized? I tell them they're talking to you right now, aren't they? They're telling you about what we've been doing and um they are very comfortable with all sorts of people and all sorts of situations. And that's been a really wonderful benefit that I did not expect. So do you believe that um, homeschooling offers the same level to your children of education that they would get in a public or private school? Yes. I think that um, now today we have as many opportunities if not more to pursue their interests or let them be as creative as they want um i have the time and the ability to and the energy to to let them just pursue archery or to pursue japanese conversations or um financial freedom or building a business anything that they are interested in doing we can we can follow up with that. We can um, make wonderful lessons out of it. And we have so many resources like this, you know, the local co-op I mentioned, the village and these other people who teach piano and guitar and um, gosh, just anything you can think of, you can find it, whether it's online or, or locally and the kids can learn it and they can um, enjoy doing it. And some of them, you know, find their lifelong passions, which is just fantastic. Wow. But do you think that uh, homeschooling is something that will benefit all families and children? Because I hear, I noticed we didn't ask you, what grades are your children in and their ages? Now they are 16 going into the 11th grade and 12 going into the 7th grade. And you started seven years ago? Yes. So wow. we started 4th grade and 5K. So it's changed a lot, um, elementary versus middle school and high school. You know, it, it's really different. But um, we've had such a wonderful time and, and um, learned so much and had so much fun, Ma- made so many new friends. It's just been wonderful. So as for it being I'm a, sorry. no, sure. As for it being appropriate for every family, no, I don't think it is. I, I think um, every family has to decide if it's right for them, uh, whether we're in a national uh, worldwide pandemic or not. But um, I think that it's definitely a viable option and your kids won't necessarily be missing out on anything by homeschooling. So if a parent, what advice would you give a parent um, who's considering homeschooling at this point? I think the best thing that um, any parents can do is, talk with their children, talk with their extended family members, talk with their friends, talk with other homeschoolers like us and these Facebook groups like you've been doing. Um, Gather as much information as you can and then decide as a family if this is something that you want to do, if you want to try. You're not locked into it. It's very flexible. It's very adaptable. Um, You can always change your mind. Um, You know, it's easy to do here in Mississippi and – 
it, it might be something that works for you. If it's not, then, like I said, you can change your mind and go back to public schools or private schools. All right. Well, Carrie, um, can give that web- website or that Facebook page again. If uh, I know a lot of parents are listening now, um, considering homeschooling, especially in COVID nineteen era, what is that uh, web page? Uh, Facebook has the groups uh, Homeschoolers of Central Mississippi is one group I manage. Another one is Peak Jackson, and that stands for Parent Educators and Kids. Uh, Mississippi Homeschoolers are Awesome is a fantastic group, and it's statewide with a lot of resources, a lot of fantastic information about how to get started and, um, you know, curriculums and groups and all sorts of things. All right. Well, thank you so much, Carrie Womack, Homeschoolers of Central Mississippi, for taking a little bit of your time today. Um, And I guess you guys are not homeschooling this summer. You guys had a summer break. (laughs) We actually homeschool um, quite a bit in the summertime because it's so hot here. So okay. we take a big we take a big break around Thanksgiving and Christmas, and then um, finish up our school year in the summer. But yes, we are getting ready to start at the co-op I mentioned in Ridgeland, the village, uh, next week, Monday, actually. All right. Well, good luck to you, and um, thanks for being a part of the show today, and we will have your information posted on our podcast. Well, um, we're going to take another break in just a minute, but we have a phone call. We have Alicia Lewis from Jackson. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Thanks for calling the show. Um, Now, I did ask people to call in for questions or comments, or if you know about a hosting site in your community, um, what were you going to give us today? Well, I am with the MBA Virtual School Assistance Program, and our program was created to assist and monitor the students in this new way of learning. It is our hope that, you know, we can stand in the gap and be a helping hand to our parents. So with our program, we uh, offer to pre-K through fifth graders. Our hours are 7.15 to 1 o'clock. We offer curbside drop-off and pick-up. Our classrooms are small. We have 10 students or less, and they will be divided by grade. The students will have a sign desk or seat that will be six feet apart. Our students and staff, they must wear a mask. Uh, The students will bring their tablets, computers, hand sanitizers, headphones, Lysol wipes, you know, anything they feel they need to keep everything disinfected personally. We also provide lunch, and that will take place in the classrooms. Um, Our program hires college students and certified teachers to assist the children log in to their computers, to the classrooms, make sure they stay on task, assist with online work and tutoring if needed. Wow. We also offer an after-school program, which consists of basketball, football, volleyball, cheer, and dance. Wow, um, that sounds like a great program. Now, is this a new <laughs> program that you have started for this uh, particular um, need, or is it something you've always had? No, this is a new program that we started just during the pandemic, trying to help you know working parents. Uh, try to make, you know, just take a little pressure off of what they have going on, you know, anyway in life. But, uh, yes, we grew out of the pandemic. And, you know, we just want parents to know that we're here to assist them if need. Um, Upon arrival, all of our staff and students will have temperatures taken, hand sanitized, their belongings disinfected. Uh, We have hand sanitizer stations in all of our classrooms and throughout the building. We... um, defog the classrooms, the building, and the restrooms during these hours as well. Teachers will disinfect the classrooms often. Uh, During the summer program, thank God, we had no positive cases because of all the methods that, you know, we've chosen to use. They they seem to have worked, so we're thankful for that. Uh, The cost of our program is $100 a week, and we are seeking sponsors to assist parents and students at this time. Oh, right. You know, well, Alicia, we actually talked, we had Dr. Wright on the show earlier uh, about, what, two weeks ago, Tara, three weeks ago, and mm-hmm. a lot of parents across the state are in need of programs like this, hosting sites, sites that are allowing parents to send their children there, help them with their virtual learning work, and then they can pick them up in the evening be- evenings because uh, younger kids cannot stay home by themselves, and they need help. Now, uh, again, I want to reiterate, they need to bring their own computer and laptops, correct? 
That is correct. They would need to bring those along with their headphones so they can, um, you know, have a little time. Even though it would be 10 students or less in the classroom, they may can hear a little bit better if another student may have a question or if another student is online as well. How many students can you um, um, house this semester? Uh, We're looking to accommodate up to 40 students. We have... A big open wide area that we can house more than that, but we don't want to turn into a school system. We're just wanting to help for the parents that would, you know, really need some help out here. So we're looking to kind of cut off at 40 students, and that would allow us to have uh, no more than 10 students in the classroom, spaced out six feet apart. And where are you guys located? We're at the MBA at 2240 West Brook Road. That's Jackson, Mississippi, 39211. All right. And, Alicia, we're going to put your information on um, our podcast for people who need to use your program. But um, are you filling up quickly? Do you know how many slots, about how many slots you have left? Uh, Not at this time because, actually, applications have been coming in when I'm not there. So once I go in, I'll be able to tell exactly how many slots we have. So people need to quickly i'm sorry (laughs) okay exactly they do need to act quickly because like i said we only have 40 slots total so and i don't know how many have signed up as of now but if they need more information they can give us a call at 769-232-2111 or 601-957-7373 or they may go on our website at mbahoops.net and that's m B as in boy, A, correct? Correct. Yes. Thank you so much for calling in and giving that information. We were asking other people around the state if you know of any hosting sites or you yourself can provide a service for uh, communities, go ahead and do this because it is needed now. This is a time where communities communities are going to have to come together and fill that gap. Exactly. Thanks for calling in. All right. You too. It's time for us to take another quick break. And when we return, we'll welcome our next guest to the show, Director of the Judah School of Performing Arts, Monica Jones. Now, if you know of a virtual learning assistance center in your community and would like to share that information, give us a call at 1-877-672-7464. Stay tuned. This is Mississippi Education Connection on MPB Think Radio. Dr. Susan Buttress, Professor of Pediatrics at the University of Mississippi Medical Center and host of Southern Remedies Relatively Speaking. Join us as we explore issues that relate to you and your family, from mental health obstacles and family interactions to handling life disruptions. Whatever the issue, let's try to figure it out together. You can listen live Tuesdays at 11 on MPB Think Radio, or you can subscribe to the podcast by searching for Southern Remedy on your preferred podcasting app. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Good morning. This is Mississippi Education Connection on MPB Think Radio. I'm your host, Michelle McAdoo, along with my co-host, Tara Wren, Director of Education here at MPB. Well, today we've been discussing alternative learning options for students. Now, there's still time for you to share your question or comment. The number to call is 1-877-672-7464. Now, several parents are confronted with the reality that their child's school will be hybrid or virtual only this semester, but don't have an option of staying home and supervising their children's learning. Our next guest is also helping to fill that void. Let's welcome to the show now director and co-founder of Judah School of Performing Arts, Ms. Monica Jones. Good morning, Monica. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being a part of the show today. So um, tell us a little bit about your performing arts school and how long you've been um, in existence. So our performing arts school, we formed it in 2016, 
and uh, we are located in Ridgeland in the Odyssey Shopping Center. Um, our school services about 200 students and families, and uh, we provide the arts for them. So um, ballet, jazz, tap, acro, hip hop, um, music classes, uh, voice, piano, drums, theater, art. And we use these um, tools, is what we call them. We use these tools to um, develop leaders into the community helping them to become ch change agents is what I like to call them. Uh, just to go out and to make a difference, using the arts to change lives. Well, Monica, that's, that's a lot of services that you offer and certainly needed and for children to be wholesome and, and along with their academics. And speaking of academics and in the virtual hosting program that you have there, I'd like for you to talk a little bit about it because it's something that's much needed as well to help our students uh, and the parents this semester absolutely my son goes to one of the charter schools and they have been very informative on their plans and processes for virtual learning and they held a parent zoom call um, and parents just started expressing the challenges that they saw coming due to you know most working full-time either out in the field or working from home um, who's going to monitor the child while they're working and so i contacted uh, one of the administrators to let them know that judah's school I'm um, as willing to open our doors during the day to be able to accommodate students for their virtual learning. And so it's not only open to um, just the charter schools, but any child that's grades K through eight. And we're going to help them log in to their specific classes through whatever platforms that the school is using. We're going to monitor them, help them stay focused during the class. Um, snacks are going to be provided as well as performing arts education for them each day. So, Monica, how exactly will it work? Will they need to bring their own laptops and computers? Um, how, does, how, does, how does it look when a parent drops their student off, their child off? Right, absolutely. So we have several rooms, and the students will be divided according to grades. Um, we ask that students bring their own device, so whether a laptop or an iPad, um, bring their headphones, any learning materials, so pen, paper, pencils, and they must wear a mask um, for the duration of the stay while they are inside the building. So what what's the hours of the, the program? 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. And will teachers be there to assist students as, with their work? Absolutely, yes. So we have a small window frame that um, teachers will be able to assist students um, with their learning and with their homework assignments. Um, but just know that that will not be done for the remaining two hours maybe after class is over. So let's say, for instance, I know Smilo Collegiate students are going to be virtual learning from 8.30 a.m. until 3 o'clock p.m. Um, they're going to have their classes. They're going to have their snacks, going to have their lunch. We're all going to set out a few um, hour, a couple hours maybe um, for them to be able to do their homework assignments, and then we're going to provide them their arts education. Oh. Well, will lunch be provided um, from your um, from your program, or will the kids now, have to bring their own? Right. So majority of the kids do have to bring their lunch. We do know that Smilo Collegiate is providing lunch for their students, so we are going to make provisions for those children and go pick up their lunch. But if a parent knows that a school is providing lunch for students, just give us a call and let us know. We're going to make sure that that child um, has lunch as well. We'll go and pick it up. So it sounds like you're working with um, your child's school, but this is an opportunity for schools and school systems, even across the state, to work with these types of organizations within the community. How do, what is the feedback you're getting from the school and any other schools that you may have um, come in contact with and told them about your service? Well, the only ones we've come in contact so far has been Smilo Collegiate and a couple from the Madison County area. But um, JPS or any other schools, if you hear um, parents' concerns and they're looking for a place to be able to accommodate their children um, during virtual learning, please give us a call. Um, our number is 769-257-0330. They can give our office a call or they can go online to www.judahschool.com. And there's more information concerning our virtual learning. We're going to do um, what we can do um, in order to be able to accommodate as many students as possible. You know, when I was younger, you know, I used to always hear it takes a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. And now that I have my own, I definitely understand um, that we all need each other, especially during this time. So this is Judah's way of extending a hand to say, hey, we're here to help. 
Um, if you know of anyone, just have them give us a call. We're going to make as many provisions as we can for these children during this time. And this schedule from mm-hmm. 730 to 530, it's going to stay the same until the schools decide that they want to reopen. Oh, and how many students right now can you accommodate? We can accommodate at least 35 right now. Now, um, are you planning to um, open another site to accommodate more students? I am. So once we reach full capacity, we have already been working with um, some other building landlords. They're going to let us rent out their buildings. Like I said, we're going to accommodate as many children as possible. So it's not just limited to the Judah School site. So we have to branch out and open up another building we will. So it sounds like like Tara and I were saying on um, previous shows, that communities can come together and do this as well. If they find a site or they have a site, churches or, uh, like you said, summer camp programs, and they know that they have a, a large a lar- a facility that can hold students and they have the, um doesn't have to be certified teachers. It could be um, retired teachers. It could be people, that, educators or, or mentors that want to, help students do their virtual learning work. Um, This is a good opportunity for communities to come together and and open more programs like this because they're needed all over the state. And I'll add that um, Monica mentioned that they're looking for other buildings. This is also opportunity for communities and and landlords who have buildings that are not rented out and just sitting there, you know, if they're parents or other individuals. And Monica, your school to extend your accommodations as well, you know, hey, let them use it. You know, that's, this is a cry to open up those doors and, you know, let them use it and, you know, work together to be to be right. within that village that you spoke about, Monica. So this is an opportunity that that can happen across the state uh, with various programs and can start up programs. Monica, I know you already had your your performing arts school, but what extra did it take to start this particular program here for your virtual hosting site? Well, it really wasn't anything extra. The Judah School staff, we got together. Um, once we got off the Zoom call, we kind of came together and said, hey, you know what, there is a need. Um, what can we do to help? Um, and so right now we have enough Judah staff to be able to accommodate the students. And if need be, if we have to reach out and solicit other help, we will. But right now we are fully staffed and capable um, and able to be able to accommodate at least the 35 students for, for our site. And did you mention a fee? How, how much is your um, program? Yes, so it's one hundred and fifteen dollars for the week, and that is going to include us um, monitoring the children, make sure they get logged on uh, from seven thirty to five thirty every day, um, providing them snacks, and then their arts education, and for us to be able to pay the staff to be able to watch and supervise and monitor them. Now, Monica, what uh, provisions are you taking to make sure your staff and your students stay safe during COVID nineteen? Absolutely. So we're treating this as if we would our regular studio procedure. So no one can enter our building without a mask on. Temperatures are taken and charted when they enter the building and before they leave the building for the day. We have um, automatic hand sanitizing stations. Our doorknobs and surfaces are disinfected in between transitions. Um, And each of our studio rooms have an air purifier. Um, The air purifier actually has a piece of technology that is certified by NASA. And it kills germs and viruses and bacteria from not only the air, but off of the surfaces as well. So we are taking precautions and doing what we know to do in order to keep our family safe. And even inside of the classrooms, the tables and chairs are um, spread out apart for social distancing. All right. Well, thank you so much, Monica. Now, again, we will post your link to your website and put your phone number on our podcast for parents that are in need uh, of a virtual learning hosting site because we know a lot of parents cannot quit their job so they have to work but their students and child schools will not be open this semester so thank you for filling that gap in the community and good luck to you on the second uh, location and uh, again i'm sure you will be blessed for doing this Oh, thank you so much. Thank you all for having me. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're <laughs> welcome. Well, we're going to take a quick break, break, but before we do that, we do have a caller from the Gulf Coast. Good morning, Andrea. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. I'm doing homeschooling for my daughter, you know, but uh, I'm trying to find groups in my area, but it, I'm unable to find groups in in on the coast. Do you have any information like on places? 
Well, well I, mm-hmm. I think, Andrea, our first guest mentioned there are several groups on um, Facebook that you can log into, become a member of those groups. I've done it myself, Andrea, and found them to be very, very helpful. One group is called Homeschoolers of Missis- Central Mississippi, and then there's also Peak, P-E-A-K. I know there's a Peak Jackson, and I saw on there that there are other Peak, like it might be one from Peak Gulf Coast. But if you go on okay. and at least start there, that will give you um, a good start. And those ladies and gentlemen and teachers on there will lead you and guide you to the best place that could help you in your particular area. Okay. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Be safe and be blessed. You too. Now, if you're listening and you know of a homeschool group or a homeschool program in the uh, area of the Gulf Coast, uh, South Mississippi, you can give us a call at 1-877-672-7464. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with Jennifer Weiss with the Croc Salvation Army's Croc Center Homeschool Program. This is Mississippi Education Connection. Hey, this is Larry Morrissey with the Mississippi Arts Commission. I'm one of the hosts of the Mississippi Arts Hour, the arts interview show on Think Radio. We talk with visual artists, musicians, writers, as well as people who help bring the arts to their communities. We hear about how each artist learned their craft and get some insight into their creative process. You can hear the Arts Hour every Sunday at 5 p.m. on Think Radio, or listen anytime by subscribing to the show through your favorite podcasting app. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Thanks for listening to MPB Think Radio, Inside Mississippi Education Connection. I'm your host, Michelle McAdoo, along with my co-host, Tara Wren, Director of Education here at MPB. Well, today we're discussing alternative learning options for students. Now, if you have a question or a comment or you know of any hosting sites in your community, give us a call at 1-877-MPB-RING. That's 1-877-672-7464. Well, let's welcome our final guest to the show. She's the Music and Creative Arts Coordinator for the Salvation Army Croc Center, Jennifer Weiss. Good morning, Jennifer. Good morning, Michelle. How are you? We're doing fine here. How are you doing down on the coast? Good. So again, thanks for being with us today. I know you're really busy getting prepared for the upcoming school year. But real quickly, tell us a little bit about you and your role as the Music and Creative Arts Coordinator at the Salvation Army. Absolutely. I think it is my third year as um, the manager of this department. I started out just as a teacher. So it's been a pretty cool transition. Um I love what I do. I get to work in the arts every single day. Not a lot of people who went to school for that or are passionate about that get to say it. So I'm super excited about that. Um, Also, I just love that it's ministry-focused. We aren't just concerned about educating in the music and arts, but also in life-giving, you know, truth that comes from the Word of God. And so for me, that's like the big bonus of what I get to do. All right. Well, today we're talking about homeschool programs and alternative learning settings for students, especially during this pandemic. So talk about your homeschool program and how it's, how it's designed. Absolutely. So our program exists to kind of go alongside what people are doing um, as homeschool parents already. So when you homeschool, you miss out on a lot of um, clubs, activities, and different things. So we really offer, like, music, arts enrichment, sports teams, activities, science labs, um, foreign language, things like that. And we're working towards being able to offer, like, the core curriculum, but right now we're just sticking, you know, with what we do already. So so you say you were, you guys are actually meeting about adding um, curriculum like English and uh, math and things like that to fill that need for students that – aren't going back into the classroom? Yes, we are. Um, It is a conversation at the moment, but I'm hopeful that it will become reality soon because there's just such a need for it right now. Um, We do, we are able to offer the smaller class size, which I think is comfortable for people right now with all the unknowns going on. Now your homeschool program, 
it takes place virtually or they actually can come to your site? So our program takes place on site. However, we are offering virtual classes this year for the first time on Tuesday and Thursday. We started offering virtual private lessons during the pandemic. We even did a virtual online musical, which was super fun. So we're (laughs) kind of just getting into that realm and excited for all that. Speaking of pandemic, how did the pandemic um, affect the change in your program? Because I'm sure you had to change a lot. Um, Being a huge facility, I went online and looked at the Croc Center. It is beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Um, Yeah, it did change some things. You know, for a little while we closed um, like many people did, but we worked from home. So we were able to kind of be innovative and brainstorm what reopening would look like during this pandemic. And so we do have like less capacity now, um, less people in our programs and things like that. But it's also, I think, a benefit when you look at it, you know, you get more one-on-one time with instructors. It's safer. Um, and so we're keeping our class sizes in between five to, like, nine students. Um, and so far, we haven't had any problems with having more than that in our class. Are your instructors, instructors certified teachers? So some of them are, but it's not a requirement. Um, it's It's a benefit that we have not being, like, an accredited institution so it's more like a community center kind of style but we're moving towards um having some you know training and different things in place that ensure our instructors are qualified to do what they do um this past year we actually had a teacher training because we have a great um classical christian academy for high school students that we're hosting during our homeschool program so that families can they can bring their high school students and their younger kids at the same time. And the teachers for that are just amazing. And we trained our teachers alongside them this summer, and it was just a great experience. I'm super excited for the results of that. Now, Jennifer, I'm going to put you on the spot, in the hot spot. So you can take this back (laughs) to your uh, directors and the powers that be. But if you were listening earlier, we, uh, this whole entire state is in need of hosting sites for parents that have to work, but their child's school will not be open for face-to-face classes. Your facility is huge and will be a prime location to house students, not I mean, they can bring their own computers, they can bring their own lunch if need be, but a lot of people and communities around the state are coming together and um, realizing that we need more hosting sites for parents to have somewhere for their kids to go as they work during the day. Is that a thought maybe for your facility? You know, I think I have heard people have conversations about it. I think right now we're not ready for that, but who knows what the future holds. I definitely am interested in that um, as I'm also interested, you know, in having the full-time academy for homeschool students. That would also be a neat idea to entertain and look, look into ways to doing that. So, Jennifer, we just had a call on Andrea, and hope, hopefully she's still listening as I ask you this question. Um, she was looking for some help in your area or is looking for help in your area in terms of homeschooling. Do you Is there some sort of Facebook group or groups that you know of that may be able to help her get started? Yes, I actually have a good friend who runs a homeschool group called Christian Homeschoolers of South Mississippi, and she does Facebook Live tutorials and videos and she's just super helpful for those who are brand new to homeschooling there's also um some other groups like happy homeschoolers of south mississippi um and homeschooling hippies which is a fun group so they have um yeah you can just search in the groups actually if you're looking for like curriculum or how do i sign my kid up for homeschool all those different things, um, and they've really done a great job of making that information available. Now, that was Happy Homeschoolers in South Mississippi? I like that one. Yeah. And Christian Homeschoolers of South Mississippi. Yeah. Okay. Well, Andrea, again, if you're still listening, you can write those two down, and like um, um, Jennifer and Tara said, if you go, if you browse 
homeschool in South Mississippi or in the Mississippi Gulf Coast, I'm sure a lot will come up. Now, um, Jennifer, what have you guys done to ensure the safety of your students and your staff during this pandemic? Um, that's a great question. So glad you answered or asked that. We have been um, following, of course, the CDC guidelines and the governor's guidelines for our area. So everyone does wear a mask in our facility. Um, we also have sanitizer. When you come in the facility, masks and gloves available for people. There's also um, some procedures about cleaning. We clean in between classes in our classrooms. Um, you know, we also maintain the social distancing guidelines, and we also have this really great fogger that we use when um, the programs have stopped in that room. It's just like spray sanitizer throughout the room, and so, yeah, I think it's really good so far. We haven't had anything happen to worry about, and so I feel pretty comfortable every day when I go to work. That's great. So you have not had any positive COVID-19 cases uh, so far this summer? Not that I am aware of. That's wonderful. Now, when does your um, registration um, open and your semester start? Registration is open now. Um, It actually opened a week or so ago. We did a $50 registration fee um, until August 3rd, and we were going to raise the price, but we decided to keep it $50 for anybody listening who's interested so that's a great um, deal for now. And then our semester starts on August 24th. Do you all provide any type of financial aid for those who may not be able to um, pay the full registration or tuition fees? Good question. Yes, we have uh, scholarships that are available. You just have to apply. There's some steps to go through with that. But if you go on our website, crocmscoast.org, and you click on membership, the scholarship applications on that page, you can download it. You can even email it to myself, and I will pass it along to my supervisor and the people who review that, and they'll make a decision about financial aid. Right, because Salvation Army is known to help the community that's in need. So you guys are there. Um, I look, again, online, your facility has a huge pool and it looks like a tropical setting it is beautiful you guys have tennis courts and looks like a little uh, resort basically (laughs) it is really nice well we we don't have tennis courts oh okay (laughs) it's a good thought but yeah it is a very lovely facility anybody who is interested in becoming a member also who does our program um could apply for a scholarship for that or just get a membership and enjoy the facility after or before their classes whenever they're there so now you mentioned some um, people can email you directly. Um, what's your email and the website and the phone number? Um, yes, my email is jennifer.weiss, it's W-E-I-S-S, at uss.salvationarmy.org. My phone number is 228 and our website, of course, is www.crocmscoast.org. And I just want to thank you for having us on, Michelle. Like you said, the Salvation Army, um, you know, our, our slogan is do the most good. So we're just looking for how we can serve um, families, serve the students, serve the parents, and the homeschool community this year. Um, and I'm looking forward to hearing from everybody. Yes, so if you are in the um, um, coast area, please, we will post their information on our podcast and actually post all of the information we uh, received today on our podcast. So if you're looking for a virtual learning home site, assistant program site, or looking to maybe change and do your uh, students at home um, homeschooling, we will have information on our podcast about that. And Tara, we're going to post on the education website. If you yes. know of a hosting site, if you want to start one, please email education at mpbonline.org. And Tara Wren and her team would love to have that information out there for parents that are in need of virtual learning hosting sites. Well, we've come to the end of another great show. We want to thank you for listening and thank our guest, Carrie Womack, Jennifer Weiss, and Monica Jones for joining us. Now, if you like more information about the programs we featured on today's show, you can listen to our podcast at mpbonline.org slash Mississippi Education Connection. 
This program is a production of MPB Think Radio in conjunction with MPB's Education Department and the Mississippi Department of Education. For Tara Wren, I'm Michelle McAdoo. Stay tuned. Southern Remedy for Women is next. And join us every Friday right here at 10 a.m. on MPB Think Radio.